we've noticed really recently that we get a lot of this form of pot down wells. They're about this big. Sorry, there isn't a scale on that photograph. <laughs> about maybe 40 centimetres high. Um, so why are we finding complete pots down wells? Well, they're not rubbish in the sense that, you know, they're not broken, they haven't been thrown away. Um, archaeologists really like explaining uh, odd things as ritual. Do we have um, a, the votive deposition of these pots into wells? Wells are interesting places um, because it's very important to get clean water, so they're also places that kind of go down into the earth, perhaps towards the underworld. Are, are we seeing a focus of ritual activity? Well, possibly. Um, or possibly that this type of pot is really, really useful for carrying water. Um, perhaps we have you know, pots that are useful for storing and carrying water around the place. And if you drop it down a well, the water's going to kind of cushion the fall and you're not going to want to climb back down there to retrieve it. So again, context is giving us these interesting ways to approach how objects function. It's kind of a two-way um, thing. Of course, if it is a water jar, it might be a very appropriate thing to use as a votive deposit <laughs> in a well. So um, it's, it's a murky situation, and archaeology can't always give us hard and fast answers. But here is um, another idea, and this is, again, a phenomenon that we encounter in Rome and London quite a lot, the idea of the foundation deposit. These, it's material culture deliberately placed in relationship to a building. In this case, buried under the floor, a little beaker with a lid on top of it, which is kind of broken, unfortunately, now, and a brooch inside. Um, and the conventional interpretation of these is that they are exactly that. They are votive offerings um, to local spirits or gods to ensure good fortune um, for the building and for its inhabitants. And that's, that's great, and it's, it's a really interesting recurrent pattern that I think we, we can kind of get behind, we can believe in. But actually, we can move even further than that. We can find um, some really very specific patterns that perhaps we can interpret in, in a more precise way. This is a, a, a little pot found within the makeup of a wall of a first century Roman building, which had this really interesting group of objects inside it, part of another amber amulet, um, a burnt fruit, perhaps burnt as a gift to the gods, a number of deliberately broken objects, an iron key with the end broken off, and a military-style buckle. Um, now, I like to, to, uh, to kind of... In, to, uh, think about these things with a little bit of drama. I like to, to think, well, what actual actions do these reflect? So, you know, they've burnt the, uh, the fruit, they've snapped the, um, the objects, um, perhaps they've rolled the dice into the jar, they placed the iron key in last, which I would argue is a deliberate way of sealing um, the deposit in place, locking it into the building. Um, but, uh, so we can kind of get some sense of perhaps what some of the symbolic um, framework around all of this might have been. But interestingly, dice have now turned up in three separate um, deposits in uh, Roman London, quite often in association with something which might give us a hint of the profession of the people involved. So here we have an uncut gemstone, and another one was associated with a little lead alloy model of a cleaver. So do we have some... See, are we getting a sense of some very specific... Um, Roman beliefs associated with when you set up a new business. Perhaps you're rolling your dice to, uh, as a symbol of good fortune because it's a gamble, it's a new thing you're doing. You're including something which is likely to help you get that good fortune, like your little amber amulet. Um, but you're also um, te basically telling the local spirits exactly what it is you're trying to do here um, so that they know what kind of good fortune to give to you. Uh, we've got we've a few different examples of these now. There's some more details in the transcript of this lecture. <laughs> 